What is going on everybody and welcome back to another video. In today's video we are going to be continuing with our money printers and we're going to be adding in upgrades. So in this case we're just going to be adding a single one. We're going to go about these upgrades by creating ourselves a little button that's going to be displayed in the front of our money printer entity and making this button clickable in order to actually upgrade our printers print amount. So let's go ahead and get started by opening up our seal underscore init, our init, and our share.lua files for our printer entity. As well as that, we want to open up our concommands.lua file because we will be creating ourselves a console command that will be used to upgrade our print amount. So first of all, let's work with our share.lua file. And just in the setup data table values, let's go ahead and create ourselves another network variable for the print amount. So self colon network var. This will be an integer, so int. And because we already have an integer network variable created here with the value of zero, we want to increment that by one. So this will be one. And the name of this network variable will just be print amount. And since we have this network variable now, we can go ahead and remove the print amount down here. And that's all that we're going to need for our share.lua file. So next, let's go ahead and navigate to our init.lua file. And let's start with our timer function here. As you can see, we are still using our print amount here versus our network variable. So change that to self colon git print amount. After that, we want to actually set the value of print amount to something. So in the same place that we're setting the storage to zero, let's set print amount to 20 or any other value for that matter. We can go on to our seal underscore init file and let's just go ahead and navigate to the bottom. And the first thing we want to do is set the font surface dot set font to HUD hint text large. And the reason we do this is so when we go about getting the text size like we did up here, it'll give us the text size while taking in account the font type here. So after that, let's create ourselves a couple variables. The first one being what we want to be displayed on our button. I'll just call this button name and set this equal to print amount. After that, let's create a button name with set this equal to surface dot get text size. And this takes in a single argument, which is the string or the text that we want to get the size of in this case, button name. And one more variable, this will be the angle vector for our entity. So let's call this upgrading equals self colon get angles. Now we want to go ahead and modify this upgrade ang variable a little bit. So we're going to do that by first calling that variable upgrade ang colon rotate around axis. And this takes in two arguments. The first one being the vector that we want to rotate. In this case, we want to rotate the forward facing vector. And we want to rotate this by 90 degrees. And again, upgrading colon rotate around axis. This time we want to rotate the right facing vector. And we're going to rotate this 270 degrees. Now after all that, we can go about drawing our button, or in this case, the word box. So again, we're going to be needing cam.start 3D 2D. And this function takes in three arguments. The first value is going to be the position that we want the button to be in. And we're just going to use pause plus ang colon up. Or sorry, upgrade ang colon up. And we're going to multiply this by seven. And this is just to move it out from inside of this entity and move forward a little bit and actually let's go ahead and change that to eight. This way it'll most definitely be in a visible area and it won't be intersecting the entity at all. After that, we want the angle of the button and that'll just be upgrading. And last of all, the scale. And we'll set this to 0 0.2. End off the 3D, 2D. Now inside of here, we can go about drawing our word box. So draw dot word box. 
This is going to take in seven arguments, the first argument being the size of the border. I don't care for a border, so I'm just going to put it to zero. Second argument, the x position, and this will be negative button name width, then multiply that by point or 0 0.5, and then we'll have a nicely centered or nicely horizontally centered button. Then the y position, this will be negative 10. The text that we want to be rendered on that button, and this will be button name. Then the font type, we'll do HUD hint text large, and you want to make sure that this font type is the exact same font type that you used when setting the font up here. After that, the color of the background, we'll set this to a gray, and then the text color, or the font color, and this will just be full on white. After all of that, we want to go ahead and throw in some logic here so we can determine whether or not the player is looking at this button. So we're going to use an if statement. If local player colon get eye trace dot entity. So if the player is looking at an entity, if they are looking at an entity, we then want to check to see if the local player colon get eye trace dot entity is equal to the entity that we are currently working with. Now if they are actually looking at an entity and they are looking at the entity that we are working with, in this case this printer entity, then we want to determine what they're looking at. So let's create ourselves a local variable, I'm going to call this tr for trace, equals self colon world to local. This is going to convert a world position to local position, and this is going to make these values easier to work with. So all this is going to take in is local player colon git i trace dot hit pause. Now with that variable created we can go and check to see if their if their i trace or the hit position is actually within the bounds of this rectangle. And the way that we do this is it's a little bit of or it is mostly trial and error. So it's gonna take some testing, but something that will work for this fairly decently is these values here. So let's go ahead, do double parentheses, and we want to use the tr variable that we created, and we want to grab the x value. So if the x value is greater than 7, and the x value is less than 7.1, then if that outside of these parentheses, outside of these parentheses here, we also want to check for, so and, then parentheses once again, we want to check the y values now. So tr.y is greater than negative 5.9 and tr.y is less than 6.1. Then, end it off. If this is the case, then they are within the bounds of the button. And we can go about displaying something on that button to actually show the user that they are hovering over the button and that it can do something. So we're just going to draw ourselves another word box with no border the same positioning, 0.5, y position negative 10, same text of button name, same font of HUD hint text large. But the one thing we want to do different here is we just want to make the background color a little bit darker. So we'll still do full on gray, but we're going to change the value from 100 to 200. This way when they hover over it, the button's background will get just a little bit darker. And then we will still have the font be white. So now once that's the case, once they are hovering over that button, we want to check to see if they press the use key on it. So if local player colon key down, and the key that we want to check to see if it's down is the in underscore use key. By default, this is usually E. So if the E key is down while they are hovering over this button or while they are in these bounds that we have set up here, we want to go ahead and in this case, call a console command. So local player, colon con command, and the console command that we want to call is upgrade underscore print underscore amount. And after this, still inside of the parentheses, we want to put a space. That's very important is that space. This is just to separate the console command that we're calling from the arguments that we're passing in. 
So after that, outside of the parentheses, or outside of the quotes, I mean, we want to concatenate onto that. So two periods, self colon ent index. Isn't this is just going to return the unique identifier for this entity, or the unique index for this entity. In this way, we can go ahead and determine what entity we want to work with and what entity we want to upgrade. So once that is done, we can move on to our concommands.lua file and actually create that upgrade print amount command. So right at the bottom of this file, let's create a new function called upgrade print amount. Takes in three arguments, the player, the command, and the arguments. And all this function is going to do is it's going to first grab the entity that we want to upgrade. And since we are passing in the entity index, when we call this console command, this part right here, we can just use that argument. So we'll do args one. This will pass in the entity index and this function, this whole entire function will go about returning that entity. So we can then call set print amount which is going to change the value of this network variable here. And we're just going to set this to 100 for now. Now once that is done, we actually want to go about adding this as a console command. So con command dot add. The name of the console command, we'll do upgrade underscore print amount. And then the second argument being the function that we want to call whenever this console command is run upgrade print amount. So save that. Let's go ahead, head into game now and test this out. Once we're in game, let's go and find our entity, spawn it in. And as you can see, it is currently just printing 20 at a time. If we hover over the button, you can see that it gets darker. And now if we press the use key on it, it is now printing instead of 20 every time or every second, it is printing 100 every second. And also to show that it is independent, from other printers. You can see that this one's printing 100 at a time, this one's 20, and we can again upgrade this one, and this one will also print at 100. So now that we have the upgrades working, that is going to conclude this video. There will be one more part to this, but in this video we went over the Start 3D 2D once again, and we use that in order to draw ourselves a button, and how to get that button to react to button clicks. So in the next video, we will be finishing up this printer by making just a few minor changes, like setting, instead of hard coding this value in here, where we have it set to 100, we'll actually make it so it goes up in incremental amount, and there is a limit to how much we can upgrade it. So until then, thank you all so much for watching, and I hope to see you next time.